On today's show, the Heat reached a new low on Saturday, losing to the San Antonio Spurs. And after, Jimmy Butler took a subtle jab at the front office. I'll tell you what it was and how the Heat can turn things around. All of that and much more coming up on today's Locked On Heat. You are Locked On Heat, your daily Miami Heat podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to Locked On Heat, your daily podcast on the Miami Heat. However, you might be tuning in on YouTube, Odyssey, or on your favorite podcast app. Thank you for, so much for making Locked On Heat your first listen every day. I'm Wes Goldberg, solo here without my usual co host, David Ramil. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on NBA. Uh, we'll talk about how Jimmy Butler may have called out the front office without many people noticing. Plus, uh, Victor Oladipo getting a chance to return to Indiana in a minute. But first, five observations from the Heat's loss to the Spurs on Saturday. Let's jump right in. Number one, to go for the tie or go for the win. Now, this is the decision that's been getting most of the criticism uh, in the uh, few hours now after the game. Down two with 14.7 seconds left to go. Uh, the Heat took, a two, uh, took two different three-pointers as opposed to Bam Adebayo maybe taking a layup right at the basket, which is something that I'm going to uh, discuss in a second here. But just a quick recap, Kyle Lowry inbounding the ball to Tyler Hero. Again, heat down two to the Spurs with 14.7 seconds to go. Lowry inbounds to Hero, inbounds the ball to Hero. Hero gets a screen from Jimmy Butler. Hero comes around that screen. The Spurs are giving up too much space for Tyler Hero. So Tyler just pulls up and goes for that three. I have no problem with that. Tyler Hero had the room. The Spurs defenders dropped under the screen. That's a shot that Tyler Hero takes in minute 17 of the game, and it's a minute. And it's a shot that he should take in minute 48 of the game. I have no problem with that. He is really good at those pull-up threes. He is confident when he takes them. I expected it to go in, so I don't have a problem with it. Um, but then after that, and this is the thing that, and I don't think most people have a problem with Tyler Hero going for the win there. Bam gets the offensive rebound, and he gets the rebound, and he pulls it, and he's probably six, seven feet away from the basket. Keldon Johnson, who is smaller than Bam, but he's between Bam and the basket. And there's one other defender kind of roaming around over there, but it's mostly Keldon Johnson on the Spurs between Bam and the basket. Bam pulls down the rebound, and the way that he had to pull it down, he's, his body is already turned a little bit, where the pass out, the kick out to Caleb Martin, who's wide open for three, right in front of him, okay? That's the easy pass. It actually would have been harder for Bam to grab that rebound, come down, make a dribble move, and get to the basket. Um, I saw a lot of stuff on, on Twitter and things like that saying Bam passed up a wide-open shot. I even tweeted, look, I have no problem with Miami going for the win twice on that final possession. A lot of people on Twitter said Bam had a wide-open layup. He didn't. Uh, to me, that was not wide open. That was not an easy layup for Bam to make. He would have had to get in, gotten through Keldon Johnson, who, again, small but very strong for his size. Um, and the way that his body was turned, Caleb Martin was right there. It was the easy pass. Caleb Martin is the best three-point shooter on the team. Wide open for the win at home. I have no problem with it. Bam makes the easy pass. Caleb Martin gets a good look at it. He just misses it. And, and so the Heat had two chances, two good looks, I thought. As good as looks as you're going to get in that instance to win the game. Here's the bigger problem. Is that Miami... Missed four of their final five shots in that game. The four of their final five shots in those final two minutes. And they gave up 115 points to the worst offense in the NBA. That is the problem for the Miami Heat. Not the fact that they had and missed two chances to win the game with 15 seconds left. Observation number two. Miami's point of attack defense has been really bad lately. It was really bad against the San Antonio Spurs. They had 54 points in the paint. Here's the problem. It's not necessarily... The paint defense, because if you look at that 54 points in the paint, I'm going to get to I'm going to get to this more in a minute here. But the non rim paint shots, that's what the Heat were giving up over and over again. The Spurs shot really well on those non rim paint shots, um, better than you'd expect. But the Heat also made it really easy for them. Here's the problem with Miami's defense. And again, it's not at the rim that's necessarily bad, right? They usually 
are able to form that wall um, and get in front of guys. The problem is giving up easier looks in that painted area, not necessarily at the basket, but in the painted area, then you want to give up. You want to give up mid-range shots, and that's where you want your opponents to shoot, but you also don't want to make it super easy for them, and you don't want them, even more importantly, to get to their sweet spots, because everybody, every scorer kind of has that sweet spot in the mid-range. If you let him get to that spot, then that's trouble. If you let him get to a different spot in the mid-range, now you're playing efficient defense. The problem is not anticipating, on at least on Saturday, not anticipating where the Spurs wanted to go with the ball, not anticipating where it was that they wanted to drive, giving up the angles that the Spurs wanted to get. They're slow coming across screens, fighting over those screens. It just, it, I went back and rewatched some of those, uh, the easy buckets that the Spurs got, and it just, the common denominator was every Heat defender just sort of didn't seem focused, didn't seem to give much effort, didn't seem to maybe watch the film. I don't know what it was, but it was like Keldon Johnson would try to drive to his right, and the, and like Bam Adebayo or Caleb Martin or whoever was guarding him uh, on that second. It's it's a lot of times the second defender, right? It's not the the con the point of contact defender. Not all the time. It's not the the, the first defender on him. It's when the Spurs involve a screen or something like that and you're getting the second defender pulled into the action on the backside and every offensive ball handler is taught hey instead of reading your man you got to read the guy behind your man so that you know where that opening is going to be and time after time it just felt like Miami's second guy getting pulled into the action had no idea what was going to happen with the screen what angle it was going to be set at what angle the the or what direction the ball handler wanted to drive they just seemed out of sorts and it was very out it was very uncharacteristic for the Miami Heat. How can it be fixed? More effort, playing faster, moving faster, more focus. I don't know. Maybe watching more film. Observation number three. Max Struess did not play at all in the second half. Uh, Duncan Robinson did. Both combined to go 0-4 from three-point range. Struess for the season is shooting 35% from three-point range. Duncan Robinson is shooting 40%. Uh, criticize Spo if you want for the rotations, all right? You can criticize him if you want. I see it all the time after every loss, even after some wins. Spo getting criticized for his rotations. Here's the problem. The players are the players that you got at some point. And right now, the players that Miami has, their three-point shooters aren't making threes. And Miami really is relying on the Max Struces, Duncan Robinson, Gabe Vincent. Gabe Vincent, by the way, shooting 29.7% from three-point range. And he's not even available and hasn't been available. And we don't know when he's going to come back. The Heat have been really coy about that. But... When you're relying on these guys to space the floor for Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, Kyle Lowry, Tyler Hero, you're asking a lot of these undrafted guys. You're asking a lot of con for you're asking for a lot of consistency for players. Undrafted players tend to struggle in consistency, right? The, the consistency is the hard part. If you could play like a like Julius Randle, for example, and he's not an undrafted guy, but this this example will make sense in a minute. Julius Randle can have games where he looks like an absolute all-star. That doesn't make him an all-star. You have to do it every single night. Two out of three nights. Three out of four nights. You've got to be there putting up those numbers. It's not enough to just do it once in a while. And right now, Miami shooters have been once in a while shooters this season. Max Drews can go off for 30 points in a game this season. Most of the season for him, he's been shooting 35% from three-point range. Duncan Robinson, you put him in the game instead of Max Drews. Eric Spolster just looking for a shooter. Just looking for a shooter who can create some space, and it's just not happening. And this isn't even specific to the Spurs game. This is just a more of an overall problem for Miami. You need consistent shooting. Last year, Miami, number one in three-point percentage. This year, they're like 22nd or something like that. Observation number four. Um, the Heat are not making the most of this soft stretch of the schedule. This is now three games into a seven-game stretch that they're going to be playing five teams that have one of the eight worst records in the NBA. In other words, this is a stretch of the schedule where Miami is loaded with tanky teams, all teams looking to get Victor Wembanyama. They've already lost two of them. They lost to Detroit. They lost to the Spurs. Coming up next, OKC Houston and another game against the Spurs coming up, coming up this week. Uh, they have to win these. They have to win these. This is not the time of year, uh, and the Heat are not in a place where they can afford to give up uh, should be and easy wins. Uh, observation number five, the non-rim paint shots that I referenced earlier. They are becoming a barometer for the Heat. The, the Jimmy Butler scored 30 points against the Spurs on Saturday. 10 of his 16 attempts were non-rim paint shots. 
the Heat overall shot 40%, or I'm sorry, 48% on these non-rim paint shots. That's really good. That's good. Uh, but it wasn't the 56% that they shot against the Clippers a couple nights before that in a win, okay? On the other side, the Spurs made 55% of their non-rim paint shots. So they shot 55%. Miami shot 48%. Miami's offense, offensively, Miami, that's what they do. That is their bread and butter to their offense. And that is not good. Most teams will give up those mid-range shots because they're the least efficient looks. What you don't want to give up are the three-pointers that are efficient and the points at the basket, which are the most efficient shots. But if you can keep them in that in-between area, that's what a def defensively, that's what you're scheming up to allow offenses. Miami, they've got guys who can shoot it well. Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, Kyle Lowry. But not guys who shoot it at an, even at an elite level the way that Kevin Durant, DeMar DeRozan, these guys do. And so it kind of feels like this season. If the Heat are making those shots like they did against the Clippers, they could beat anybody. If they're not making them at an elite level, and then worse defensively, if they're starting to give them up the way that they have recently, that's going to be a real problem. Um, unlike the Clippers, again, the Heat did not have the advantage on those non-rim paint shots. And that's just another number for us to watch. It is starting to develop and turn into the barometer for the Heat this season. All right, coming up, Jimmy Butler said that everybody on the team needs to be better, but did but why another comment has gone under the radar and why that might have been a shot at the front office. I'll tell you what it is next. But first, today's episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Are you wasting money on subscriptions? 80% of people have subscriptions that they forget about. Maybe for you, it's an unused Amazon Prime account or a Hulu account that never gets streamed. That's, there's this great app I use that helps me track all of my expenses, and because of it, I no longer waste money on subscriptions I don't even use. You might have heard of it. It's called Rocket Money, formerly known as Truebill. The app shows you all subscriptions in one place and cancels what you don't want for you. Rocket Money can even find subscriptions that you didn't know you were paying for. You may even find out that you've been double charged for a subscription. To cancel a subscription, all you have to do is press cancel and Rocket Money takes care of the rest. Cancel unnecessary subscriptions with Rocket Money today. Go to rocketmoney.com slash locked on. Seriously, it could save you hundreds per year and all this cash counts at the end of the year during the holiday season. That's rocketmoney.com slash locked on. Thank you for making Locked On Heat your first listen. For your next one, check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. Available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. All right. Um, here's the quote from Jimmy Butler after the Spurs game. Now, a lot of stuff is being picked up from this post-game press conference, especially in regards to Eric Spolster and Jimmy Butler, basically just saying, hey, we got to be better, we're not good enough, all this stuff. But here's one of the ones that have been making the rounds. At the end of the day, we got to be honest with ourselves, and everybody has to be better. That's from Jimmy Butler following the Spurs game. What I haven't seen making the rounds and what I thought was interesting was what he said right after that. I'm going to read you the full quote in case you haven't seen it out there. Jimmy Butler, after the Heat lose to the Spurs. At the end of the day, we got to be honest with ourselves and everybody has to be better. One through however many people we got on this roster. One through however many people we got on this roster. That's the part to me that was interesting. Now, we know that this team is dealing with injuries. Um, they've been down somebody for every game this season. They're clearly limping, asking a lot of their players. They're playing the G League assignment game with Orlando Robinson and Drew Smith. Do we need a big Orlando Robinson? Uh, we need a guard. Wave him. Resign Drew Smith to the two-way contract. All this stuff. Um, Gabe Vincent, currently out. Okay? Um, but th say, one through however many people we got on this roster, on the roster, not available, on the roster, you don't think that Jimmy Butler knows how many guys are on an NBA roster? You don't think that Jimmy Butler knows that there's supposed to be 15 guys plus two two-way contract guys on an NBA roster? Of course he does. Of course he knows how many roster spots an NBA team has. However many people we got on this roster, not, he could have worded it very differently. He could have said, however many people we got available, all 16 of us, all 14 of us plus the two-way guys. He could have worded this in so many ways, but he said, however many people we got on this roster. This is meant to draw attention. It's meant for us to ask, how many people do you have on this roster? How many people do the Heat have on the roster? 
The answer is 16. They could have 17. It's 14 guys plus the two-way, the two two-way contract guys. It's 14 of 15 roster spots open. Regular roster spots, non-two-way. And like I said before, they've so they have this open roster spot, is what I'm getting to. They have an open 15th roster spot besides the two-way contracts. And they like Drew Smith and Orlando Robinson enough, by the way, to be playing this two-way G League assignment thing where you're waving one and signing the other, depending on who's available. Where I don't know, people in that locker room are probably saying, why not just sign one of these guys to the 15th spot? And we know why. We know why. It's because of luxury tax. Mickey Harrison, the Heat Ownership Group, they don't want to pay the luxury tax. So when Jimmy Butler says, however many people we got on this roster, that to me is a subtle jab to the front office. The Heat have been limping through this season, dealing with injury after injury, and they have yet this open roster spot that they haven't been used. And maybe it's not even on Orlando Robinson or Drew Smith. There's free agents after uh, out there. Carmelo Anthony, DeMarcus Cousins, name one. Name a veteran that any of these veterans would want to play with. Now, I'm not saying that the Heat should go out and sign Melo or should go out and get Boogie or that though any, either one of those players would make a meaningful difference. But I'll tell you what, we're not that far away from Eric Spolstra saying, if you can give us seven minutes, eight minutes, nine minutes, please give us seven, eight, nine minutes. Give us whatever you got. It would have been helpful to have another body. And it would still be helpful to have another body. Does the front office deserve criticism for not filling the open roster spot. That is worth questioning now. Because at this point, anybody can help. And I haven't seen a lot of people criticizing the front office. Now, I get why they haven't filled the spot. It's probably the right decision not to fill the spot, okay? You don't want to get into the luxury tax this year because you already know that you're going to be in the repeater tax if you do it this year. Next year, you're already paying the luxury tax next year when Tyler Hero's extension kicks in and Jimmy Butler's extension kicks in. You already are. Okay? So I get why they're not paying the luxury tax, and it is probably the right decision. Avoid the repeater tax, and that helps you be more willing to build out your team in the future. So again, and, there, and there's not a player out there right now. Like I would not go into the luxury tax to pay DeMarcus Cousins, to pay Carmelo Anthony, to pay what other, other free agent. But I can also tell you this. I know the players don't care about owners paying the luxury tax. They don't care. Jimmy Butler does not care. And if your be best player has an issue with that, that could lead to different kinds of problems on this roster. Hey, we're giving everything we have. We're playing through injuries. We are fighting through this stuff. And yet, ownership can't pay a few extra bucks to help us out here. We were one shot away from the NBA Finals last year. And you're not giving us a full roster? That's the player's perspective, and it's one I understand. I understand the ownership's perspective. I also understand the player's perspective. They're the ones out there playing, sacrificing, playing through injuries, putting their body through this stuff, putting their body through this pain, and yet ownership isn't willing to go through the financial burden. This is a team that was a shot away from the finals, and they're not acting like they were. And I've said this all along, going back to the offseason. If you really thought you were that close to making the NBA Finals, you go into the luxury tax the way that Milwaukee and Philly and all these other teams that think that they're competitors, Boston, when you think you have a chance at making the Finals, you pay the luxury tax. The Heat don't. This isn't just that. They, they are willing to pay the tax when they really truly believe that they have a team that can make the Finals. They don't think they have that team. And that's why they're avoiding the tax right now. But that is tough. That is a tough pill to swallow if you're Jimmy Butler and the rest of this team trying to limp through and wring everything you can out of this season. That is a tough pill to swallow. And this is something to monitor going forward. Victor Oladipo will return to Indiana for the first time since getting traded to the Pacers. How can he help the Heat get a much needed win? That's next. But first, today's episode of Locked On Heat is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs. Uh, LinkedIn Talent Solutions. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Like hiring a great producer for your podcast or the assistant that makes your day-to-day -day that much easier. There's nothing like making the perfect hire to help your business. That's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs, which makes it incredibly easy to create a free job post. Plus, 
You can add your job post in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the words among your friends that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus the leading competitors. So if you still need to hit your annual goals, get some help around the holidays or close out that final round of KPIs, LinkedIn jobs can help you find the right candidate and end the year right. LinkedIn jobs helps you find qualified candidates that you want to talk to faster. Post your jobs for free at linkedin.com slash locked on NBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NBA to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. The Heat are in Indiana to play the Pacers tonight. Uh, remember to reach Locked On Heat on Twitter, Instagram, email us at LockedOnHeat at gmail.com. This is going to be Victor Oladipo's first visit back to Indiana since he was traded in January 2021. Tough to believe that this is uh, Vic's first game back in Indiana, but it makes sense. He's been injured basically that entire time. So um, first chance to play in front of the Pacers crowd again. Now, I think this could be emotional for Victor Oladipo. Former top 10 pick that uh, struggled to find his footing in Orlando and in Oklahoma City. Gets traded in the Paul George deal to Indiana and becomes an all-star. Becomes an all-NBA player. And is, I remember ranking him back then, I think 12th or 13th best player in the NBA. He, he was two-way as good as anybody. He was right there with the Paul George's, Jimmy Butler's kind of guys. And it looked like he was going to be in that... and. and Back then, that was when Gordon Hayward was sort of in that range, too. And I thought he was going to just sort of turn himself into that guy. Probably never going to be a top 10 guy, but on a, an average team, could put up all NBA numbers. I thought, yeah, this guy is going to be like a top 15 guy sort of for the next few years. And then the injuries just ruined. It, it just derailed his whole season. It de derailed his whole career, and he's never really been able to get it back. And it's been unfortunate. One bad uh, surgery that went wrong and he's been trying to correct it ever since and you really feel for him I remember talking to him about it and talking to people around Vic for the story that I wrote for the ringer on Victor Oladipo last season uh, when he made his debut after so many uh, after a couple of years off and, uh, and and you know the one thing that kept coming up was I was the guy in Indiana I was the man on the Indiana Pacers this was my team and I was finally where I wanted to be at I was at the mountaintop in the NBA, all-star, all-NBA, competitive Pacers teams. Went to college in Indiana. Like, that was his home. There was a moment where he was, like, ringing the, they have, at, at these Indianapolis Colts games. Like, they have this thing, this anvil thing that you get to ring. And he was, like, the, the guest of honor ringing that, just standing in front of 70,000 NFL fans, all cheering for him, wearing a Colts jersey. It was really cool, and you could feel like, hey, I made it. I made it. And then it was, with the injuries, taken away from him. And so he's never been able, Houston, Miami, has not been able to find that. Hates the fact that he has to come off the bench. Hates the fact that he has to miss time. Hates all of this. He wants to be the man again. So this trip back to Indiana could be emotional for him. I don't know how much emotion he'll actually show. I don't know. But you also hope... The way that John Wall over this weekend, John Wall on Saturday made his return to Washington, D.C., playing in front of Wizards fans for the first time. He did once before during the pandemic, but there's no fans in the arena, so it doesn't really count. So for John Wall, he came back and then had a great game. They started him, had a great game. Depending on Miami's availability, I don't know, do they start Victor Oladipo for this game just to kind of give him that moment uh, to be introduced as a member of the starting lineup? Maybe. It's possible. We'll see. I don't know how emotionally Spo gets into this stuff, especially considering that they should have their starting lineup available. Um, Jimmy Butler, Victor Oladipo, Tyler Hero, Duncan Robinson, Max Drews, all probable. Dwayne Dedman is questionable. Gabe Vincent, Omer Yurtsevin, both out because of injuries. Jamal Kane, Nikola Jovic, out because they're on the G League assignment. Um, but this would be a great time, starting or not, for Victor Oladipo to give Miami the lift that they need. And, and I anticipate that I'll probably come off the bench because that's where, that's his job. Um, so Oladipo, this would be a great time to use that emotion, harness whatever it is that he's feeling, and give the Heat that lift on the bench, that jolt in that second unit that they have been needing. They've had one of the worst benches in the league this season. After having the highest scoring bench in the league last season, one of the worst this season. Reason why, easy, Tyler Hero goes from sixth man to starter. Old Depot is supposed to replace him as sixth man. Obviously, the injuries have ruined that, derailed that to, uh, so far this year. But he's back now. It's been a few games. He's had a chance to knock off the rust. This is kind of good timing for that. 
It's been, you know, three, it, four games now. So Victor Oladipo, what does he look like? It should be cool, at least for him. I hope that he has a moment. I hope that he has a chance to, to shine in front of Indiana, shine in front of that place where he was an all-NBA guy, um, and maybe recapture some of that energy. Uh, I mentioned the G League stuff before. Orlando Robinson getting signed. Drew Smith getting waived. Jamal Kane, Nikolajovic, both on G League assignment right now. Why did they bring back Orlando Robinson? Uh, he had 26 points and 21 rebounds for the Sky Force on Saturday. He's been really good in the G League. Again, centers tend to put up really big kind of fakish numbers in the G League because there's just not a lot of centers in the G League. If you watch these G League games, a lot of times their centers are like six, seven, six, eight guys. There's not a lot of like real centers in the G League because most of them, if you're 6'10", 6'11", 7 foot, you get picked up and you end up on an NBA roster because that is still one of the mo most like rare things in, in, in the league is just humans who are seven feet tall. Those guys are hard to find. All right, so if you're that big, you just tend to be on a roster, okay? If you're that big, young, talented, with a little bit of potential, you tend to get on a roster. So um, the Heat have been playing this G League game with Orlando Robinson and Drew Smith. Drew Smith, there's people in the league that, you know, Drew Smith has fans around the league. Um, I, I, I do wonder what his long-term outlook with the Heat is. He didn't play great as a starter, but he also isn't supposed to. He's a two-way guy. Um, and with Deadman being questionable, Jovic being in the G League, um, having Orlando Robinson makes sense. Um, Kyle Lowry, Victor Oladipo, Tyler Hero. You've got enough guards here, enough ball handlers in addition to Jimmy Butler, obviously, where you don't necessarily need Drew Smith. So bringing Orlando Robinson for another option in that front court, especially considering how many points in the paint you've been giving up lately, that makes sense. I don't know if they'll play, uh, but 26 points, 21 rebounds, that's good. A little inflated because you're not really going up against other size in the G League, but he's people like him. Just like Drew Smith has fans around the league, so does Orlando Robinson. I know that um, right now the Heat have a, ha, had to worry about Drew Smith, Orlando Robinson getting poached by rival NBA teams. I don't think they have to worry about that right now. Um, but it is just something to watch as they sort of play this game of wave one, sign the other, depending on uh, roster needs. So uh, how can the Heat beat the Pacers tonight? They just need to... I, I, I Look, I like the Pacers a lot. Offensively, they're really good. That mid-range shot... It can't be open the way it was against San Antonio. They need to lock up defensively. They need to just give more effort, come across those screens faster, have more focus, and then offensively, they got to find a way to not be so reliant on that mid-range stuff, get to the basket a little bit more. Look, the Heat are always going to be a mid-range oriented team. It's just the way that this roster is built. It's just the way that this personnel is. But if you, it doesn't mean you have to shoot as much as you did. If you can replace some of those mid-range looks with at-the-rim looks that are a little bit more efficient and just get that three-point shooting. When guys make shots, everything looks better. If somebody could step up, Victor Oladipo, Duncan Robinson, Max Drews, Tyler Hero, somebody from three-point range, and you, it's not going to be just one somebody. You need a few somebodies. All of a sudden, Miami's offense looks so much better. Defensively, um, it looks better because you're playing half-court stuff. You're not playing in transition as much. And so um, they just got to play better. I don't know how else to say it. It's not great analysis, but that's really what it is. Thanks again for making Locked on Heat your first listen every day. Remember to subscribe to new episodes of Locked on Heat on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. Ring the bell to get notified as soon as new episodes go up. David and I will be back uh, later tonight with a recap of tonight's game against the Indiana Pacers. For your next listen, check out the Locked on Sports Today podcast, the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts.